All right, here we go. Lesson 6.2 from our uh, trigonometry class here. We're going to be talking about the unit circle and the trigonometric functions in the unit circle. So let's dive right in. Here I've got a picture of the unit circle. And the first most important thing I guess we need to say is I want you to notice what the length of the radius of this circle is. Notice that going from the center out to this point gets us to the ordered pair 1, 0, which means that this circle has a radius of 1. And so what you need to know, every unit circle has a radius of 1. Okay, so over here on the right, we have our six trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. And if you notice, sine is y over r, but since we're in the unit circle, r is 1. What is anything divided by 1? Itself. And so we can see in the unit circle that sine theta is going to be just y. Whatever the y coordinate is, that's going to be sine theta in the unit circle. Cosine theta, x over r, but r is 1, so that's going to simplify to just x. And then if you notice, tangent does not depend on the radius, and so the tangent is going to stay y over x. No matter what the radius is, that's going to be your ratio for tangent. All right, so let's talk about cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, r over y, but r is 1, so the cosecant is going to be 1 over y. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, that's going to be 1 over x, and again, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, and so no matter what the radius of the circle is, the cotangent is going to be x over y. So that's kind of a brief introduction to the trigonometric functions within the unit circle. And so now let's talk about what are some things you might be asked to find. Okay, for example, let's say that somebody says find the six trigonometric functions for pi over 6. Okay, so let's say somebody says, hey, what is sine? of pi over 6. Well, we can come up here to our formula for the unit circle, and we can see sine of theta. Theta is the angle. Sine of pi over 6 is going to be whatever the y coordinate is at pi over 6. And so sine of pi over 6 should be a half. That is the y coordinate at pi over 6. Okay, so then what about Cosecant, well, we just flip it. Cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. So cosecant of pi over 6 should be 2. Next, cosine pi over 6. Again, up to the formulas, we can see cosine in the unit circle is x. So we're going to take the x coordinate, square root of 3 over 2. And that should be our cosine of pi over 6. And then we can find the secant because it's the reciprocal of cosine. So you just flip it. Uh, whoops. And I wrote a 2. Now, it's not good math etiquette to have a square root in the denominator. So you're going to need to rationalize the denominator. And the long way to do that is to multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. And that's going to give us 2 square root of 3 over, that would be the square root of 9, which is 3. And so that's the long way to rationalize the denominator. If I were to show you a shortcut, which I would like to do, uh, it turns out that in order to rationalize the denominator, what you can do is you can take the denominator and you can control C, copy, and paste to the top. 
you can copy and paste to the top and then in the denominator you can simply erase the square root symbol and notice that that gets us the same answer so I the, the way I look at the shortcut I say copy and paste and then erase okay let me see if I can undo that bam all right one second while I work the technology so here's what we had okay if we flip the cosine to get secant and then I said to rationalize the denominator you want to take the square root in the bottom and you want to copy and paste to the top and then you want to erase the square root in the bottom so that's the shortcut for rationalizing the denominator okay moving on next we want to find tangent of pi over 6 which we said that's y over x uh, I do have a little bit faster way to get that. It's the reciprocal of x times y. That would be an equivalent way to get tangent. And so if we take the reciprocal of x, that would be 2 over square root of 3, taking the x coordinate, flipping it over, and multiply by y, which is a half, and that should give us our tangent. Here the twos are going to cancel, and that's going to give us 1 over square root of 3, which needs to be rationalized. So we're going to copy and paste, and then erase. And last but not least, we need cotangent of theta. And to do cotangent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this previous answer for tangent and flip it here because if I flip this answer I'll have to fix it again and I don't want to have to rationalize again okay so we're going to take 1 over square root of 3 and flip it which is going to make that square root of 3 over 1 but anything over 1 is itself okay so that's how you can find the six trigonometric functions for any angle in the unit circle okay notice that any angle in the unit circle is going to have an x and a y and then you can just plug into the formulas to find your uh, trigonometric ratios your trig functions okay so that's just a brief example there uh, one of the things i do also want you to notice is that these angles go counterclockwise and they're positive so positive angles go counterclockwise all the way around to zero which zero is 360 and zero is also 2 pi okay so there's one thing you might want to know is that 360 and 2 pi are the same and pi and 180 are equivalent angles let's see what else what other example could we do we could do something like this uh, let's say that they want us to find 2 sine of pi over 3 minus 3 tangent of pi over 6 let's say we want to find this expression and they don't want a decimal and it says don't use a calculator okay well this is perfectly doable with the unit circle here we notice that our first angle is pi over 3 and so we can come up here to the unit circle to pi over 3 and since they ask me to find the sine sine is y and so i need the y coordinate at pi over 3 which is square root of 3 over 2 got that okay and then it says minus three times and then we need to go to pi over six which luckily we've already done pi over six and they want tangent which is y divided by x y over x 
And I don't know if you noticed, but we already found tangent over here for pi over 6. It's square root of 3 over 3. Rationalized. And now that you've got your trig functions replaced with numeric values, we can actually simplify this, okay? So for this first multiplication, the 2s are going to cancel, leave square root of 3. And for the second multiplication, the 3s are going to cancel and leave square root of 3. And that's going to actually work out to be 0, okay? Now, all of this said and done, let's look at how the calculator can verify what we've done so far, okay? So we want to make sure that we're in radian mode, which I can see the little R up here at the top. I'm in radian mode. And just to verify this first output here, sine of pi over 6, we can input sine of pi over 6, and it verifies that's a half. We can also do cosine of pi over 6, and it's going to verify square root of 3 over 2. So you can see that the unit circle is given us these answers. Also, you can see maybe why the calculator gives a specific answer. It's from the unit circle. And then if I want to check the uh, second example I did, I can actually input that whole problem in my calculator. I have a nice calculator here, the Casio FX991EX ClassWiz, probably the best calculator, scientific calculator I've found to work with. Pi over 6. And so you see I can input this entire problem just the way it looked in the textbook. And if I hit equals, it's going to verify my work there, 0. So we can use the calculator to verify these answers here. All right, so let's see what else you might need to know from this section. Okay. It turns out that there may be some problems where it actually asks you to use a calculator. So, for example, sine of 28 degrees, and it might want you to round that to three decimal places, okay? So you're going to need to know, how do I use a calculator correctly to get this rounded? Well, first of all, you've got to know what mode to be in. And the little degree symbol says I need to be in degree mode. So we're going to switch our angle unit to degrees. Type in sine of 28. And it's going to spit out a decimal. Now you need to know how to round correctly. Tenths, hundreds, thousandths. If we're going to go to three decimal places, the nearest thousandth, that's four, six, nine. The four makes the nine stay a nine. Four, six, nine. And this zero is optional, 0 0.469 rounded correctly. So you'll need to know how to use a calculator. Uh, also, tangent of pi over 10, you're going to need to know how to switch the mode of your calculator because sometimes your angles are in degrees, sometimes they're in radians. So you're going to have to be aware of that Make sure you're in the right mode when you're inputting these problems. I've had students before take an entire test in the, you know, they just never switched the mode. They took the entire test in degree mode, and they get about half of the problems right, you know, half are in degrees, half are radians. All right, so this problem, tangent of pi over 10, is approximately 3, 2, and that's going to be a 5, rounded, 0.325, rounded. All right, so there's calculator. And let's look at one more example. Let's say that they give us the ordered pair negative 3, 4, and they want us to find the value of all six trig ratios, okay? So obviously they've given me an ordered pair. This is an X and a Y. 
And uh, if we think about the way this looks, negative 3 and 4 in the coordinate system, that would be a point here. Now that distance from the center out to that point, that's going to be the radius. And so in order to know which set of formulas to use, we're going to have to know is the radius 1 or is it not 1? Because if the radius is not 1, then we're going to have to use these formulas that actually involve the radius, okay? Not well, not tangent. Tangent doesn't involve the radius. But these other trig ratios where the radius is not 1, we might have to use those formulas, okay? So how can I figure out what the radius is? Well, it turns out... If I drop a line straight down, I can create a right triangle. And we know a formula for finding a missing length of a right triangle. And that formula is Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to make use of the Pythagorean theorem to see if we can figure out what the radius is. And then once we know if it's 1 or if it's not 1, we'll know which set of formulas to use. All right, so let's do a little plug and play. The B, which corresponds to the X, is negative 3. And the A, which corresponds to the Y, is 4. And the C is always the well, in this case, the hypotenuse, which is also the radius. All right, so let's do a little work here. 4 squared, 16. Negative 3 squared is 9. 16 and 9 is 25. And then I have to take the square root so I can figure out what C is. And we can see, no pun intended there, see that the radius is 5, okay? So instead of C, we can say that's the radius is 5, which is not 1, which means we're going to be using the blue box here, the blue box's formulas, okay? So let's find our six trigonometric ratios for this particular problem. All right, here, and let's do it in blue. Sine theta is Y over R. Y is 4, R is 5. And then we can go ahead and get cosecant, because if you know sine, all you have to do is flip it to get cosecant. How about cosine? Cosine theta is X over R. X is negative 3. R is 5. And then we can get secant. Flip it. Flip it good. Whoops. And then we can get tangent. Tangent is y over x. y over x. 4 over negative 3. And cotangent is the reciprocal. Negative 3 over 4. And then some of you may be thinking, does it matter where I put the minus? Can I put the minus in the denominator? Can I put it in the numerator? Can I just stick it out front? And the answer is yes. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you put the negative. You can put it in the bottom, top, out front, as long as there's only one. That doesn't matter. And we're done. Okay, so we have found the six trigonometric functions for an ordered pair not in the unit circle. And this is uh, super important, okay, that you be able to find all six trig ratios specifically for ordered pairs not in the unit circle because there aren't many circles that have a radius of one, okay? So that's going to do it for this lesson, I believe. If you have any questions or comments, Feel free to put those in the comment section below, or if you're one of my students, you can text me. And thanks for watching.